today it is time for the long-awaited grip van update about a year later so some of you may remember we put out a video at the beginning of last year so 2022 so this is something that's been in the works for a while super excited to finally share it we bought a grip van we bought a grip van small van sort of the plans and, and everything else and everything else basically saying that we got a grip van for our production company and we were going to be documenting the journey of, of it being built, you know, making changes to it, making updates, fixing it and getting it ready and turning it into a grip van beast. Unfortunately, that didn't happen because I because I sold the grip van shortly after I bought it. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about why I did that and what went into my decision. And maybe I can help one of you guys if you're possibly looking at purchasing a grip van for your own um, production, whether you're a freelancer or you own a production company. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be kind of sharing some of that stuff and talking about my thought process before buying the grip van and then my thought process while owning the grip van and then my thought process for selling the grip van. And also where we're at now about a year later um, from, from having the grip van and, and kind of how that has or has not affected us um, when we're going to productions. So starting out, if you haven't seen the first part of the grip van build, we'll link it up here. That, like I said, was made about a year ago and was kind of talking about the plans for what the grip van was gonna be and unfortunately what it never <laughs> amounted to. But um, yeah, check that out if you haven't already. If you have watched it or if you just want the very short summary. Um, last year, I bought a uh, Ram ProMaster City for I think around $21,000. It had about 20,000, 30,000 miles on it. So it's a pretty good deal. It was a 2015. And actually since then, Ram and Ford have discontinued their, their minivans. And that's to say, this was a mini uh, cargo van. So it wasn't a full size, like Ford Transit van, didn't have a high roof. Um, you could barely walk in it. Looks a little crammed, but. You would have to crouch down a little bit. I don't remember exactly what the height clearance was, but you couldn't fully stand up straight and, and walk around in it. There were a lot of appealing reasons as to as to why we bought it in the first place. One of them, like I mentioned, was the price. It was a good deal for what it was and it had low miles. Whenever I'm going in to purchase used gear or used vehicle, whatever, I wanna make sure that um, I'm in a position where if I needed to sell it, I would at least be able to break even and ideally make some profit off of it. And that's a big part of what went into my decisions to, to buy this grip van is that I knew uh, if I needed to, I could sell it pretty quickly and probably profit a little bit off of it once I kind of fixed it up and, and got it looking a little bit nicer and then took some good photos and all that stuff. So that was part of my thought process in, in first buying it. The more important thing though is that at the time we realized and thought that we needed a grip van. We were starting to build up a lot of grip gear that we didn't previously have. We started to acquire more C stands and combo stands and larger frames and all kinds of grip gear that normally could have just fit into like my Forerunner or one of um, one of our other cars. And as we started to build more and more gear, we got to the point where it was getting really, really tight to fit all of that stuff in a normal size SUV, especially when we needed to have like three people in the car so we couldn't put all of the seats down. The third reason that I felt like it made sense is because I started a production rental company the year before I bought the grip van and it was growing, it was doing well. We obviously didn't have a grip van that we could offer with all of our grip gear. And the area that we're at, we're the only production rental company as is. So there's definitely not a grip van that can be rented anywhere nearby. You'd have to drive several hundred miles to get a grip van basically. So I saw that as another opportunity for a way that we could um, rent it out and make money from it and help grow the rental side of the company while also be able to use it for our own stuff and on our own productions. So needless to say, that all made enough sense to justify buying it. And so um, I bought it. And if you watch the video, you'll see that it definitely had some cosmetic issues going on. One of the mirrors was cracked. It had a couple um, I think there was like a headlight cracked. 
the head unit inside needed to be updated the back of it was pretty dirty the back cargo area um, so there was definitely some stuff that that needed to be done and i knew that and it was all easy stuff i'm uh, no mechanic by any means but it was stuff that could pretty easily be fixed um, and for pretty cheap so once i bought it that was kind of the next step of just figuring out what needed to be done to sort of get it to um, a standard of us being able to to use it and then the step after that was to kind of build it out more and be able to have more of a solid long-term solution where we could be able to mount stands and mount combo stands and also have it work well for uh, people that we're renting it to so you know areas can be marked and they know exactly where to put stuff back and they know where to get something from within the van. So after that first step that was shown in the last video of kind of getting it cleaned up, getting it sort of um, to a good point of, of starting to be used like for our own productions, that is when we actually started using it for our own productions. And there's one video specifically that we actually made a video on this channel about it um, with, I think it was the Aperture 600D book light that was one of the productions that we did use the group van for so we were able to just throw everything in the back and and um, be able to bring a lot more c-stands than we would have normally brought and i think we may have brought combos as well i can't remember but you know we immediately realized that there's there's a couple issues um, number one is there's only two seats in the grip van normally we don't just have two people going to a large shoot like that so Mr. Sam had to sit in the back of the cargo area on top of a Pelican case, which is not ideal. And so that was one of the things where it's like, all right, this is kind of annoying where we have to take multiple cars um, if, we're, if we're traveling and have everything in the grip van, um, which is obviously something that was, that was known going into it, buying a vehicle with, with only two seats, I guess experiencing it in practice was, was something different. So another thing that we realized once we purchased it is to get it to a point where it was really ready to be rented. It needed more work than I thought it did. Um, I was pretty ambitious with the build of it and kind of figuring out what all um, I could do on my own without having to hire like an outfitter. And um, I was able to do a lot. We actually still have the stuff that I built right over here. We have a flag case and a C-stand case that fit in the grip van and now we just use it in the office. But I really wanted to, you know, line the floors, line the walls, um, get some professional shelving installed, all of that stuff. And it just wasn't really considered when I initially bought the van that, that that stuff would be needed and that it would require a good amount of work from uh, a professional and thus would cost a good amount of money. Another thing that became an issue once we started using it was just kind of the lack of space within the cargo area. Um, it is a very small van. It is no Ford Transit extended. And so uh, it filled up pretty quickly with stuff and especially the amount of stuff that we were trying to fit in there. It was really like a, a true one ton package with you know, like 12 C stands, two short C stands, four combo stands, a bunch of different rags and frames and lights and all kinds of stuff. And so it very quickly um, got very, very filled in there. And not to mention the roof is pretty low. And so to get stuff out, you would have to go in there and crouch and it just like wasn't comfortable. And obviously we're bringing heavy stuff out. So it just wasn't a super, enjoyable experience to kind of deal with getting stuff out of the van. And because of that, we almost started defaulting back to using our vehicles to go onto shoots. And the other thing to add is that we're not bringing all of our gear onto every shoot. We very much figure out what gear is needed for a shoot and then bring that gear to that shoot. So we're not bringing everything for every shoot. So we started using our vehicles again. The grip van was kind of just sitting there, not really being used. Stuff wasn't being done to it because I didn't want to put more money into outfitting this small profile, small interior vehicle. And so it just kind of sat for a little bit. After about a month of sitting, I finally decided, all right, I'm going to list it and see what happens. And so pretty quickly after I listed it, um, I found a buyer and I was able to turn a fairly good profit from it. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was definitely like several thousand dollars from what I had purchased it for. And that was also after taking into 
um, consideration. The mirror that was repaired, the head unit that was installed, any other stuff that, that we had done to it. So at that point, I was kind of like, all right, this is, this is a, this is a no brainer. Get it out of my life. I don't want to deal with it anymore. And you know, when the time comes that we truly need a grip van, we're going to be looking for a much larger profile van like a Ford Transit extended or something like that. So I want to talk about kind of a little bit of mindset here and thought process between the different stages. And I'm hoping that this could speak to somebody that is maybe in the process of searching for a van to use for production. The thing that didn't really click for me until after I bought the van and, and started using it is that the idea of a grip van is great in principle, but it takes a lot of work to get it to a point where it is truly usable to the standards that, that I'm looking for and I'm assuming you're looking for as well. And so you have to be fully willing, fully committed to either putting in the time or investing the money to get it to that point that it can be used for your productions. And the other part of that is if you do plan on renting it, it really has to be to that point and that standard of having insulation installed and having professional shelving system done and, and all that other stuff. Um, that that makes sort of a professional grip van. I think what it really comes down to is figuring out, you know, what your current needs are and maybe what your short-term um, future needs are. And does that justify having a larger space to put your gear or are you able to continue to put it in whatever other vehicle you have? The other thing to talk about is if, if you're using your grip van and like that's your only vehicle then like that may make more sense and that you can probably justify a little bit more because that's your only vehicle in my case i have my forerunner as well and so i wasn't gonna i wasn't just gonna drive the grip van um and so that kind of helped make my decision and realize okay i don't need this extra vehicle here if it's just sitting around and we're not using it for for production so my last point here in my opinion at least is to go big or go home with a grip van um, there are smaller options out there but i really believe that to have a long-term sustainable solution to your production needs and and, and your grip needs and all of that stuff you want to invest in a larger grip van, a Ford Transit, a Mercedes Sprint or something like that, that you can really grow into, even if you don't have all of the gear now and it just barely fills the van and there's all this empty space. Eventually, as you continue to grow, as you continue to invest in more gear, you're going to get to the point where it's going to be pretty packed in there. You're going to have a lot of gear. So buying a bigger van than what your current needs are, honestly, I think makes sense. The other part of that, though, is don't buy a van until you really, really need it. And in our case, we didn't really, really need it. We were able to go back to using our normal vehicles and we had no issues. In the rare cases that we have a massive shoot and you know we have tons of gear to move, we'll use two different people's cars. So we'll fill my car and then we'll fill one of the other Reverb team members' cars and then that'll be it and we're good to go. So there's a lot of other solutions to having a big grip van. I still think that there's probably gonna be a day when we will invest in a larger grip van. And at that point it will be fully built out and it'll be like a real grip van and a real solution for us and for other people that would be renting it but until that day comes we're good continuing to use our vehicles for transporting grip transporting production equipment and yeah works for us you may have completely different thoughts on this and that's completely fine let me know your thoughts in the comments i'm really curious to hear what other people have to say i just really wanted to make this video because a lot of people have been asking about the grip van and what is going on with it and uh, asking for a part two and all that stuff and i have been hesitant to say <laughs> what exactly has happened because i know some people might be upset i was super excited about it in the first part and it just quickly became something that was more of a um, chore and burden instead of something that should have been um, an exciting piece of gear to invest in for our um, for our company. So that's that. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from this. If you have any questions too, um, or maybe I didn't cover something, let me know down in the comments. Um, I'll, I'll answer your questions and, and maybe share some perspective that, that I missed in this video. But yeah, that'll do it for this video. Till next time.